Hello, I'm Patricia from Twin Flame Ring Connection. How are you today? Today we're going to talk about your menstrual cycles and ascension. And there is quite a bit to know about this. Now, first of all, in a very simple way, I'm going to say it like this. No matter what age you are, you can be affected because of your menstrual cycle and because of ascension. And as someone asked me, hey, isn't ascension so supposed to be easy? Yes, doing it the proper way using my methods is making it easy. However, you can feel like somehow there's like a lot of heaviness that goes with this. So the very first thing I want to tell you is your grandma didn't have a choice. Your mom may not have had a choice. Now you do because the thing that you can control is your ascension. You can affect how you work on this and incorporate and integrate your brand new twin flame body. My modality makes it easy. Now I want to get into this a little bit. So let's talk about just women in general. Do healthy women get more? The short answer is yes, frequently they do. And frequently we can look at those women with envy and say, why does it seem like they never have any problem? Well, uh -huh. some of them are excellent actresses and some of them quite literally have a different hormone balance. Some of them can have uh, different genetics. Now, everyone has the potential to hit the wall because of your ascension. You will find that there is something that feels like a limit or obstacle on your path that needs addressing. Why do you want to spend the prime years of your life on dysfunction any longer? Don't spend those best years of your life. If you're of childbearing age, if you're young, even if you're, you know, past menopause, why would you want to spend some of that time on dysfunction when you have brand new light body connections through your twin flame body to help you, to uplift you, to make it easier? So let me give you an idea of what that ease looks like. First of all, when a woman goes into puberty, she can be prepubescent, meaning it, it doesn't actually start, but it's starting up. And this can start at age nine for some girls, 10, 11, until it fully hits. Then it becomes a thing until sometimes around 45, 48, 50, 55 years old. Some people continue until they're 60. If we were to take a median of how much, how many days this is, this is unproductive time of 3,780 days over a woman's life. It's a lot, okay? Living healthy does mean something, okay? What is the real cost of being unhealthy? We need to look at that and break it down a bit. Okay, you have feeling unhealthy, feeling unwell. Even if you don't feel sick, sometimes you don't feel like 100%. You have different moods during the month. Okay, and this is every month, every month, every month. Now, let me tell you how it's supposed to go using the twin flame body modality. An ascension. An ascension that gets you to a level where instead of monthly, it's quarterly. How would you like to get your period four times a year? There's a little bit of a phase in time frame, but that is the direction of it. Why? Because the divine feminine is nothing if she's not efficient. The divine feminine part of you wants things to be efficient, doesn't want you eroded away with old patterns, old ancestries biology, things that seem broken or, or dysfunctional. Let's talk about mental health. We're in the month of mental health right now. Let's just talk about a mood. Okay, so years ago, someone told me I should warn the people around me if I'm on my period. Should we have to do that? It is a nice warning shot. I have my period, everyone. <laughs> Be forewarned. Okay, and everyone understands and forgives someone. But there's a lot of simmering of resentments during these times. 
because people don't know that they have a choice. And now you do because of ascension is upon us in earnest. We're no longer living in the land of karma, nor in the land of fluffy, but, you know, butterflies and rainbows. There's some work to be done and you have to be proactive. Let's talk about some of the, you know, things that you go through, okay? Hormonal imbalances, loss of libido, where it really hurts people's feelings. Sometimes the men in your life think that they're not desirable when simply you're just having a hormonal imbalance or you're in a mood and it has nothing to do with them, but they take it personally. Or you feel short-tempered and irritable with children or other family members that you truly care about, but yet you're just not feeling yourself right now. The emotional toll can be big. And that's just like touching the, you know, the surface. There's a huge iceberg under the surface there as well. Let's talk a little bit about what does a woman lose? Sometimes life-giving nutrients. Have you ever seen people that have osteoporosis or they show signs of osteoporosis? Brittle bones. They break bones easily. They break their ankle. They break their wrist. They break a hip. They have a dowager's hump. That's what it's called. They're, they're kind of like hunched over. And it's because the calcium is being literally leached out of their body. Cysts. Okay, I can go on and on and I will go on and on in my class to help you do this. Okay, there are other issues, metabolic issues that come up for women, particularly if a woman has had at least one pregnancy, or of course, if it is numerous pregnancies. Let's talk about the real cost here, okay? Real unproductive cost. This range is, this is like an average range from, say, you know, seven days of a menstrual cycle times 12 months a year from age 11 to age 55. If someone is being paid $20 an hour, and they cannot work for that time, guess what that adds up to over a lifetime? That's over $600,000 in a woman's lifetime. That is huge. Now, there is a disparity where you have women that not only can't earn that, but they can't even invest it. They can't even use it for retirement. They can't even use it for their own health. And you have the flip side where the majority of the investment community is primarily masculine driven. And honestly, sometimes thinking that we're just on the rig or we just have a mood or something like that, that they have to tiptoe around. Logically, people know, but it's the emotions that really get in the way. And I have worked with people who've had such bad migraines that they literally... They knew they had to come to work, but they didn't work. They couldn't. They stayed in the lounge and they stayed in there all week in the dark because that was how they had to cope. They barely had any coping mechanisms for it. There really wasn't medication for it at the time. And there is a root cause for migraine headaches that I know about that I've been guided to help people with. That doesn't mean it's Botox. I have been guided to help people understand the process so that you it takes the fear out and you know how what is a part of the process and what you can do about it. Now these are things that the medical community doesn't know because they cannot take into account about ascension. I don't want to hear a lot of bashing of medical people, doctors. They go to school to become a doctor. They're not going to school to become a pharmacist or a metaphysician. They learn on the job just like those other professions do. They are interrelated professions that need to work together like a well-oiled machine. And there has to be some latitude there. Okay. I know many, many fine doctors and the message is let them be the doctor. Let them check certain things for you. Let them do their baseline tests for you. Don't approach it with anger and distrust. There's too much of that flapping around out on the internet. And I hear people, they're angry at doctors for not 
wearing 20 hats like being a nutritionist. No, let me give you a different perspective. The doctor is the doctor and refers things out to the nutritionist, to the people to check your bone density, to the endocrinologist to check your hormone levels and other metabolic issues, to the gynecologist, to the specialists, okay? Now, I have personal stories about this. When I was first, um, you know, with my period, um, it came on, it wasn't that bad, it started to get bad. Now, I had, um, I had gained some weight, they took me, they checked me, I had a baseline check, and I was put on a medication for my thyroid because it was thought that I have low thyroid. Now doing this twin flame ascension work that I'm doing, there are reasons that the thyroid goes through adjustments, and it's not to give you Hashimoto's, it's not to give you graves or like a whole other plethora of things like dry eye disease and um, endless, you know, amenorrhea or something like that, staying in perimenopause. No, there are ways to get out of that where I help you to shed that and integrate what is new that keeps you up here. Now, let me give you some of the flip side of this. Health, vitality, a regaining of a feel of yourself that was from an earlier age, and yet you don't lose your wisdom. You don't lose your purity. It's like regaining your purity back because it's a brand new part of you that you're accessing. So check it out. The links are below. Please join our class on this where we will invite live question and answers and help you with this integration so that you have a seamless, smooth ride of ascension for your sacral, your divine feminine, other areas, including breast, heart health. There is There are things to know that quite simply are a part of my modality. I've made it a part of my modality. I have diagrams and I'd love to help you. Again, this is intended to help you actually save money in the long run, even though you might be spending a little bit of money. It is an investment and you have to look at it that way. Thanks so much. I hope to see you there. Bye now.